Halo is a franchise that many people hold close to their hearts. Those who have played the games were immersed into a new world with many things to discover, but in more recent years, fans have found much to be discovered in their beloved Halo games. Hello everybody, welcome to Gameception, the show where we find games within games and then go deeper. Today, we're delving into the potential that Halo 5 Guardians had at becoming a spiritual successor to Star Wars Republic Commando. So form up Delta and finish the fight. It is clear why the Halo games have captivated so many over the past two decades. Whether it be from late nights playing multiplayer with friends or trekking through a world of unknown, Halo has always had something for everyone. That's why back when Halo Combat Evolved was released in 2001, it completely shook the video game market. No one had ever seen anything quite like it. There were other phenomenal first person shooters at the time, but never anything quite as foreign as what was found in the Halo games. The series was a groundbreaking hit that led to many future installments. In hindsight, it's astounding to see that a game that started as a real-time strategy game became a genre-defining franchise. Everyone was trying to make the next Halo, or create the Halo killer, but nothing could stop the treads on that Halo tank that just kept rolling. Tank really does beat everything. After four main installments of the series, the original creators of the Halo universe, Bungie, sold the franchise and went on to do other projects, leaving Halo in the capable hands of its current developers, 343 Industries. Under the direction of 343, we received two remasters of old Halo games, a collection of all past Halo games, as well as two new entries into the Halo series, Halo 4 and Halo 5 Guardians. These two new Halo games didn't sit quite well with the fans, with many believing the series to be dead. 343 definitely had their ups and downs with the series, and now they're doing their best to provide a Halo experience that fans crave. With their port of the Master Chief Collection to the PC, as well as the back to basics look and feel of Halo Infinite, fans feel that 343 is finally getting back to the roots of what made Halo, Halo. Personally, I don't think 343 was ever in the wrong with what they were doing with the Halo franchise. The world of Halo has flourished under the direction of 343. Its universe was expanding to comics, television, and even more novels than before. Halo 5 in and of itself isn't even that bad of a game. It feels like a typical Halo game with some improvements, but therein lies the problem. It feels like a typical Halo game. With the buildup that Halo 5 received, I and many others were expecting something new and invigorating for the franchise as a whole. All the Halo games are still fun. They feel just a bit outdated at times though. 343 noticed this and tried to change the formula with Halo 5. Although many fans did not welcome these changes, I for one was happy to see them. The game plays what I would expect a modern Halo game to play like. I really enjoy the gameplay. It's fun, it's fresh, and familiar. That said, I still had my issues with Halo 5. When I first played Halo 5, I was confused. I didn't know what was going on in the story. I had no clue who most of these characters were, and I didn't understand what drove each character to do what they did. Come to find out, most of this information is found in the expanded universe of the Halo lore. I answered my biggest question first. Who was the blue team? I did this by picking up the Halo novel, The Fall of Reach, which did a tremendous job explaining. I really enjoyed what I read, and it actually made me sad to realize that most people would never even understand who those characters were, unless there was another game in the mix that taught the average Halo player who these people were. And as I stated earlier, the Halo universe has been growing. Sure, The Fall of Reach was created before 343 took over, but that doesn't downplay the work that they have done to expand upon what they were given. The Halo franchise is becoming so huge that you just can't get everything there is to know about it from just the games. And that makes me think of another franchise that also suffers from the same thing. 
Star Wars has become something that is so prevalent today, it's almost impossible to escape it. Even if you've never seen the movies, you still know what it is. The original Star Wars movie was released in 1977, and it took the world by storm. Things that were done in the movies hadn't ever been seen before, and if they had been, they'd never been done the same way that George Lucas had done it. Just as Halo was so impactful to the video game market, Star Wars revolutionized the movie market. Everyone wanted to get onto the Star Wars ship that just wouldn't stop. And when we all thought it finally would stop, Disney stepped back in and kicked the hyperdrive back on, sending it through what we see today. There was so much Star Wars media to be found. TV shows, comics, books, Christmas specials, and of course, video games. There was so much to keep track of when Disney took over that they decided to decanonize a vast majority of it and then proceeded to make some highly questionable inclusions to the canon. But before Disney stepped in, there were some fantastic Star Wars games. One such game was Star Wars Republic Commando. Republic Commando received high praise from critics and fans alike, even to this day. The game still holds up quite well for being released in 2005. The game is 15 years old. That's insane. It's probably older than a lot of the people that may even watch this. Republic Commando did something that wasn't seen in too many games in the shooter genre, which was make NPC characters that were actually likable and dependable. In the game, you take control over a leader of clones. These clones treat each other like they're brothers, which is apparent from their dialogue with each other. They have fun, witty banter with each other that does so much to help the player feel comfortable around them. As the leader, you command your squad to do a number of different things, like taking a sniping position, opening a door, or even getting some health. Even when they are taking commands, they don't feel useless. They can hold their own and fight off a wave of enemies, making it safe for the others to fulfill their role. Each clone has their own job on the squad, giving them another reason to make them feel useful to the player. The only times that they let me down was when they were severely outnumbered and understandably couldn't hold off the enemy. Republic Commando does a fantastic job of making the player feel like they are not a lone super soldier by having the rest of the squad be necessary to get the job done. The squad never feels like a nuisance, and the player never feels like they are doing the missions alone. All of this cannot be said for Halo 5 though, which, in my opinion, fell short on all of these aspects. And with that in mind, it's time to go deeper. Let us take on the task of creating a Halo game that lives up to the idea of being a Republic Commando spiritual successor. Because both of these games are found in the same genre, this gameception is a little bit tricky to talk about without it not feeling one-sided toward Halo. Because of that, I want to start out the game section a little different than I did the others. To start out, I want to talk about the two Source games before we really dive deep into the idea of a Halo squad-based shooter. Halo 5 and Star Wars Republic Commando have a lot in common. In both games, players have a squad that follows their lead. In Halo 5, your squad more often than not doesn't really feel all that helpful. They tend to feel like the Marines from past Halo games, with a little extra health. They don't contribute a lot to the gameplay, and players end up doing most of the work anyway. In Star Wars, it's a lot different. You cannot go at it by yourself. If you don't rely on your squad, you will die countless times. Republic Commando got the team-based gameplay right. Although the other members of the squad are not real people, they still are essential for completing the mission. The enemies are typically pretty bulky and will take a lot of shots to take down. Having your whole squad focus fire on the enemy is critical so that you can take down the biggest threat in a reasonable amount of time. Players can also have the other clones complete simple tasks like opening a door or pressing a button while the rest of the team is providing cover fire. This is something that cannot be found in Halo 5. For the most part, Halo 5 feels like any other Halo game with the squads being sort of tacked on late in development. Halo 5 was made as a Halo game while Republic Commando was made as a squad based shooter. And that is obvious. In Republic Commando, each member of Delta Squad feels like they matter. They each have each other's back because they have been with each other for a very long time. And in the game, we see that. On the flip side, Blue Team has been together for years, but anyone playing Halo 5 wouldn't really know that, aside from some minor quotes said amongst the team. We know this from the other stories in the Halo universe that are not told in the main games. 
The goal of this gameception is to give Halo what Republic Commando gave to Star Wars. That is, a strong relationship between characters that matter, along with some essential and riveting squad-based combat. The story would follow the one found in the Halo Reach novel, The Fall of Reach, which explains how the early Spartans came to be. The game would follow John 117, the Master Chief, along with the other main members of Blue Team. It would show how the team was formed and would portray their relationship and character growth. This would be done by the missions the player would take on. At the beginning of the game, we would see John chosen as a Spartan along with the other members of Blue Team. We would see their early training and progression. This is where the player would learn how to play the game. While it is still a Halo game, it would play a bit different at times because of the equipment available, like the lack of the Mjolnir armor, as well as the age of the Spartans. The following missions would follow along the foundation that has already been laid by the Fall of Reach novel. The next mission after basic training would take place on Reach, where the Spartans team up and find their way back to their base. John takes the lead in this mission and afterward is named Squad Leader. This would play out as a soft tutorial for the leadership commands that the player would be able to use. For example, players can command their squad to form up, attack an enemy, etc. The next mission would be the real start of Blue Team as a fire team. The Spartans that make up Blue Team at this point are Linda, Kelly, Fred, Sam, with John as the leader. During this mission, John would be injured by protecting Sam. The player would then take control of Sam while John gives commands on what they should be doing. This gives players an opportunity to see what it's like to follow a leader rather than telling everyone what to do. During the course of the next couple missions, players would be able to experience why teamwork is so important amongst the blue team. As stated prior, the Spartans are younger and don't have access to the powerful Mjolnir armor like they do in the standard Halo games. Players wouldn't be able to go at it as a one-man army like they did in the prior Halo games. This along with the storytelling would build upon the camaraderie of the fire team. The members of Blue Team wouldn't be seen as just another useless AI, but a vital member of the team. The combat effectiveness of the fire team would also increase, allowing players to have more freedom in what they have each Spartan do. Not only would they be able to have them take a sniping position, but as a result of trust in the group, players could set up a flanking maneuver and more, working with each strength that the members of the team bring to the table. As the story progresses, players will be put under a number of different situations. At times, they may have to complete a section of a mission alone, helping them realize how much they rely on the other Spartans. There would also be times that some Spartans may be out of commission, forcing the player as the leader to run the group at 75% strength. At some point, the Covenant would be first introduced. Of course, most players would know who they are, but they would see how the characters in the game would respond to this new threat. The Covenant were unknown to humans before this time. Players would see the fear all of the Spartans had at first, but then they would see their demeanor change as they looked to each other and realized that they would not be alone in the fight. The Covenant would pose their greatest challenge yet. They would be an unknown enemy, and the player would have to make adjustments to how their team would fight them compared to how they fought against the previous enemies. This would pose a natural difficulty increase, but as the player adapted with their team, they would be able to conquer the challenge. The game would be designed in such a way to show the group during their highs and lows, when they are successful, and when they experience loss. This would all be done to provide a backstory to the characters previously unknown to most, as well as provide a fun and interesting game to play. After 343 is done with Halo Infinite, the saga will be complete. But I'm sure that won't be the end of future Halo games to come. So if you're out there listening 343, feel free to take any of the ideas found in this Gameception and make them a reality. Thank you guys for watching this episode of Gameception. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. This one was really interesting for me to write, to put together. I don't know why, it was really weird at times, but luckily enough, this happened to be the one that I'm also doing a behind the scenes making of Gameception. So in a, in a couple weeks, a month, something like that, you're gonna see a, an extra video of the making of this current Gameception that we just, we just saw. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys, have a good one, take care.